Welcome back, well, Dr. Oyemi Oke joins us now. He is uh, a lecturer, Faculty of Law, University of Lagos. He's also uh, an electricity law specialist, also an author of Nigeria Electricity Law and Regulation 2013. Thank you for coming on this morning. It's a pleasure being here. Some of the issues are raised there, quite interesting. Uh, I know they talked about capacity, yeah. but let me start from the second part where uh, they talked about the fact that when you supply electricity, people don't want to pay. That's a challenge they face. I know we're not experts here, but I thought that one of the easiest ways to do that is to meet your people so they pay for what they consume. I think uh, the, uh, again, I follow the, the, the old argument and, and I've been following the trend. Uh, it all started with the uh, Power Africa initiative of the U U.S. government uh, that's about three going to four years now. Uh, that got crystallized recently when President Obama signed into law and act called Electrify Africa. That is to like document the initiative for the Power Africa project. And it's not a structure that will exchange the money, definitely not. The American uh, Export Import Bank is to structure a kind of uh, um, loan guarantee agreement, which is what they're doing. No money is going to exchange hands in the real sense of it, but there will be loan guarantee agreement that would t well, any, any investment banks in the U.S. that is willing to venture in Africa, well, is having a kind of investment guarantee that your money is not going to go down the drain. There will be a kind of backup to that. Even if it turns out to be a bad investment, you're going to get your money somehow. That's the kind of structure we have in there. And now they've come to Nigeria uh, to do what? To assist the discourse. That's, that's faulty. The whole value chain of it's faulty. is faulty. That's the wrong premise. Because talk of discourse. They are not the only stakeholder in the sector. If you deal with discourse alone, you're going, not going to deal with the Jenkos and the TCN and the consumers. It's going to be problematic. So it's a complex chain. It's a complex chain. You've got to deal with the old, the old structure, all these major stakeholders. Now, I heard the, uh, the chairman of uh, one of the discos complaining that uh, they supply power. Uh, they don't want to get paid. I, I, I'm not that convinced as to the logic of that because I've, I've said here several, several, several times and at other for two things. It is criminal to consume power and not pay. It is also illegal to get people to pay for power they never consume. I think the latter is more in the, in, the, in the sense of the structure we have in the country. A lot of consumers pay for what they never consume. And that creates a kind of distraught in the system. And the discourse are the receiving hand of cost, uh, consumer reactions. That's why you're having that kind of bundling up all the bills, dumping them in, the, in their offices. Uh, that's on the one side. On the, on the, how realistic is the structure that the, the MOU? I'm not as convinced. In the sense that the amount of money that is at stake is not really significant. And again, it touches only the discourse. For what? Capacity. And I've said here that we're lacking in capacity here. Seriously, technical, legal, regulatory, consumer issues in the power sector, environmental issues in the power sector, safety aspect of the power sector, no. That's the problem. So capacity is huge, and there's a huge gap that they now realize that after years. Secondly, that's not the kind of money we need in this sector. Putting nine million dollars this is a country that needs trillions of naira several billions of dollars to jumpstart the, the power sector so it's it's not too uh, a good good science for nigeria thirdly and much more importantly is the fact that from what land official has said is somebody i know he's worked with the former attorney general of labor state very smart guy he says the federal government now is de-emphasizing gas and now looking in the direction of hydro. Is that a good... Thing? We're going backwards. Gentlemen, Nigeria is taking one step forward and taking four backwards. 
the world is going from hydro, moving away from hydro to gas and from <coughs> gas to solar and renewables. Hydro essentially is renewable, but is 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 very expensive. The shortest way of dealing with the shortfall is gas, which is naturally available. But the problem with the gas sector is that, as we speak, there is no gas law in Nigeria. There's a petroleum act. There's no gas law. We have policies, no, no soft laws here and there that are subject to whims and campuses of serious players. There's no gas law in Nigeria. So the gas regime is led at the message of where well, maybe market forces. In which case, if I need gas for export like NLNG, I'm going to buy it at any amount of money. So it makes it uncompetitive for local consumers who will now buy gas from me for power. Because if you buy an expensive gas, you go to jack up your tariff. And the consumer will say, don't jack up my tariff because even the one you jack up, I'm not getting power. So it's, it's complicated. And, and, and we've said this several times. The power sector is technical. Its law is technical. Its engineering is technical. Its accounting is technical. Accounting competition has in tariffs and rates is technical. So now, now they're coming up to acknowledge the fact of the wealth of, of technical knowledge in this sector. Well, that to me is good news. They're not doing bridge gap. Those are the issues. Still a long way to go. Oh. I'm not as optimistic as for the MOU. Quite frankly, nothing will come out of it. But, but could it be that that MOU is also mindful of the fact that perhaps there's been other investments in different sectors, including the discos, so maybe they only go one step at a time? Perhaps. Maybe yes, maybe no. But that's not the way we should go. How should we? I've said it several times. We need to really unbundle the sector and the this sense of unbundling. Scatter the whole thing. Disaggregate it. Let's have layers of players. Let's have. I was. I, I gave a lecture, and I was talking to the audience, a lot of the discos and the rest at, at, at that at that workshop, and I told them, the discos are going to be in trouble. Some of the discos, if you play big, you might not make money, but you can fragment your engagement. As a disco. You could get licensed by other layers or structures of government. For instance, a code disco could get cross-listed or cross-licensed by Lagos, Oyo, Ogun, Oshun, and do small-scale power generation and distribution in those states. They have global license from the NERC, fine. But for those areas not under the grid and for renewables, they should approach the state government, get licenses. If they are having problems generating, let's say, 1,000 megawatts because of pipeline vandalization, because of dwindling waterfalls and the hydros and the rest, they might be able to generate 500 megawatts for Governor Bukunle Amosu for Mwibafo. That's Eco Disco. No, no, no. I'm saying Eco Disco. They can generate 200 megawatts for Ifazes, okay. for Fadazes, decentralized. Here, they get renewables, hydro, biomass, solar, wind, decentralized, small scales. If we mop it up, at the end of the day, they are doing more than what they, they are ordinarily able to do with the global license they have for NRC. That's why I said, until the states are able to accede and wake up to their duties, duties to Nigerians under the constitution and start to cross license these discos or other other entities also, to generate small scale power. Do they they have, have not been cross licensed yet. The, there's even no structure in place. The, the, the structure is such that the NERC, the, the bodies is agree with me that, okay, but I'm saying, disco, you're not going to make money. I foresee, I said it here two years ago. At, this, at the lecture, I said, I, I told them, I said, well, I'm predicting. I'm not uh, a prophet of doom. I'm predicting. And I know that round of reacquisition and refinancing. 
Just as it happens when all the tally comes. Some entities are still going to buy up some of these discos because they, they can't survive. And they're still going to raise another levels of financing to start to do those things again. So this your power is not something that's going to happen anytime soon. Unless you go small scale, small scale, small scale. This the, the Which the state government have inherent constitutional powers to do. And which they are not doing.